This is uh, a very quick talk about a little project that I kind of inherited a couple of years ago called TT Trigger. Um, so I'm just going to outline what it is, what it can do. There's plenty of rough edges, so I'll show you that. Um, give a quick demo and some future plans and things. So it was originally written by um, Joel Christensen. Um, he wrote it um, to help him do sound effects triggering in live theatre environment. So this is where you've got a play or a, a musical, musical theatre type um, event. Uh, and you, as a sound operator, need to fire off sound, event, uh, sound effects uh, to augment what's going on stage. So gunshots, chainsaws, explosions, um, you know, giants falling over, all that sort of thing. It was focused on live theatre. It doesn't mean that you're restricted to doing it for live theatre. It's just that that's where the focus was mostly, um, mo uh, where the thing was mostly focused on. Um, and that is, in fact, the usage that I had for it as well. Um, the project or the, the program uses Jack, the, uh, the Jack Audio Connection Kit, to do its inputs and outputs. Um, and partly as a, re as a consequence of that, it's actually possible to do some quite complicated multi channel um, setups. So, in a live theatre environment, you might have your main left, right, centre. But sometimes if you want a sound effect to envelop the audience, you've also got surround speakers at the rear. And you might only want you might want a particular sound effect to only occur from the rear channels or to start at the rear and, and rotate around. And TT Trigger allows you to um, connect a given clip to particular jack channels. So if you've got a multi-channel output card, you can have one clip that goes only to the front channels and another clip that only goes to the back channels or you can have a clip that's connected to all five if you've got a full surround sound clip that you want to do. Again, quite useful for um, certain types of theatre. In many respects, it's very similar to the distributed inter integrated show control uh, software that uh, Monty gave us a talk on at LCA last year uh, in the mini-conf. Um, whereas he was focused, or whereas his software is focused on the entire um, theatre control, so he's encompassing lighting and sound and um, even device control, so um, smoke effects and things like that. TT Trigger is only on, only focused on sound, so it's a much simpler program, and it's designed for those things where you just need to get the sound out. You don't really care about anything else that's any more complicated than that. So for a given theatre program, you uh, set up a project for the show. The project files XML, it's a very simple syntax, which is helpful because at the moment the UI that I inherited is a little bit difficult if you've got a whole bunch of effects to add. It's actually much easier to do it programmatically just by editing the XML file than it is within the GUI. I hope to change that, but that's the way it is. But because it's the XML, it makes that possible to do. You have one entry per clip, so if you have a particular gunshot you want to have five times throughout the thing, you sequence it in, you're sequencing it in order. You can also assign individual hotkeys to particular um, sound effects. So if you, um, in a more random case, sometimes with some theatre things you've got to like visually trigger, you might have five cues, and you've got to trigger them in the order that the action's happening on the stage. And sometimes you don't know exactly what that order is going to be because it depends on, well, actors walking from one place to another. And so you can have your, f your fingers on the trigger keys and you can watch the action and as something happens, you fire the individual things off. And the other really useful thing about this piece of software is that you fire a sound effect, that effect is going, you can then fire another one and it'll mix it. So you don't have to worry about having one end before the next one starts. And again, in live theatre, this can be quite a useful thing to do. The rough edges I mentioned, the big one in this day and age, um, the last official release was QT3, and nothing has QT3 on it anymore. Um, so about 18 months ago, um, I had a show that came up and I needed to use a software, it was QT3, my laptop no, no longer had QT3 on it and I figured well I could get compatibility um, libraries in there but I thought no this is a good enough reason to learn QT and do the port, which I did and I'll show a demo in a second which is the development version of that code so I haven't actually pushed it yet because other things in life came up. So the QT4 is still in development. There's still some things I need to sort out with it before it's before I do a release, but it's work in progress. Um, there are aspects of the UI that aren't 
obvious to anyone. If you don't happen to know that you've got to, to add a jack port, you've got to hold down control while you right click on a particular element, you can't find it. Um, I hope to change that as well. well. That needs doing. There's also no formal documentation of it yet, so actually discovering some of this stuff is a bit difficult as well. So I'll just uh, cut to a quick demo that's visible. So what we have here is just a very, very simple project that um, I made up just using some sound, random sound effects I, I pulled off of uh, freesound.org. So what we see here is the sequential sequence of events. So the idea being that you would start your... Um, you know, you'd start your show at the top and you would fire effects as the show goes down. You can also introduce those um, separators so that you can group your things visually to help you see it very quickly during a show. What's pre-show announcement or pre-show music, act one, act two, post-show stuff so you can actually keep track of where you are in the show without having just this endless stream of like 30 or 40 effects cues and not knowing exactly where you are. It's, it's purely cosmetic but it is a useful thing to do. So you can fire effects um, if it works no, it's not going to work now. Bother. This was actually curious, but I'm going to just actually restart it. Um, because sometimes it just gets stuck. Remember how I said there were rough edges? And sometimes, for some reason, the keyboard control just gets stuck and you can't do it. Okay, I'm just going to put the mic down because I'm finding this really hard to control. Just a sec. Okay, we'll see if this one works. Sorry? Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not a good advertisement. I mean, they have X-Face as well um, and and um, and uh, KDE and stuff, but I'm old school, so I still run FEWM because I can't be bothered upgrading to anything else. Um, okay. So I just ran through a couple then. Um, I think the keyboard thing's working now. Yeah, okay. So... You can see there at the end, I can run multiple effects at once. The window down the bottom, as it says, is the active sounds window, so that shows you what you've got active at once. In a contrived demo like this, it doesn't really matter, but if you've got a sound effect that can sometimes last for minutes, like ambience, like wind blowing or rain or thunderstorms or whatever, it's kind of helpful to know what's still running so that when the scene ends, you know that you've still got that thing and you need to kill it off or pull the fader down on the mixing desk or whatever. Um, so, yeah, you can jump around, you can go up to the top again and fire them off at will. And, um, and fire them off like that. Now, so it's a, it, the whole idea is that it's sequential, you run from top to bottom. There are a couple of controls over here. Um, this one over here allows you to pull up the window that goes over there, which allows you to connect the different channels of the audio to different jack outputs here. So this is what I was talking about, how if you've got a, mul uh, a mono audio channel, you can send it to one channel or another or another. Um, if you've got a five channel audio system, you can send it to five channels. If you've got a, f a stereo effect that's only destined for the back, well then you'd connect it only to the rear playback um, jack channels and so on and so forth. You can move the effects up and down um, through the playlist if you need to reorder it. Um, and you can also randomly play them by clicking on the on that play control there. So there's a fair bit in there already. Um, as you, as I as I showed you, the um, the keyboard control doesn't always. Th there's something wrong that for some reason the focus is wrong, or there's some some issue there. I need to learn Qt a lot more to work out exactly what's wrong with that. But that's part of the rough edges that I was talking about. So. As I mentioned, the future plans for this, I, I need to finalise a QT port or QT4 port because, of course, QT5 is out now, so this is getting a bit long in the tooth. Um, one of the problems or one of the reasons why that QT4 
port isn't pushed to um, to the source forward project page yet is because I needed to do this in a big hurry. I think I had like two days or something to get this piece of software working. So I did that and it worked and I got and, and we had the theatre show and that happened and that was all good. And then life kept going and I never actually got around to finalising that port. So I, I really do want to do that because I think it's a useful program but having it as QT4 is going to be useful for other people. The documentation I need to work on as well. Um, and the other thing that I've found in the context of theatre, about the only other thing in the, this program as far as features go that I would really, really want is to be able to have an arbitrary volume envelope that I can draw over the clip. Because sometimes what happens is you do up an effect or something for the director and you play it at, at, um, at tech rehearsal and they say, oh, that fade in at the front, instead of being over the first five seconds, could we take that over the first 20 seconds? Now at the moment, QT Trigger only plays the file as it's on the disk. There's an overall volume control on there, but to do what the director just said, you've got to go into the um, digital audio workstation software or whatever you use to do it, redo the envelope there, re-render the thing out, and then play that and that's all good. That's awkward in a tech rehearsal setting. So what would be really, really useful is um, to be able to have a representation of the volume over the whole clip, and then you can just draw in that how you want it to go very, very quick to adjust things like that. And from the for the purposes of um, most theatre shows, that's about all that I think it would need from the stuff that I've been doing. Um, but it's an open source project and so I certainly welcome other ideas about how this might be able to evolve as, you know, to fit in with other people's workflows and things like that. It's a very simple program, I want to keep it that way. Um, but because it's simple, there's not a lot to go wrong, it's very, very easy to use um, and it, you know, it fills a niche. So just in closing then, um, as I said, I acknowledge the original author. He's actually moved out of theatre now. He's not doing it anymore, which is partly the reason why he said, here, have the whole project and do with it what you want, um, because he doesn't have that need to do it anymore or anything like that. So the um, project play page is up on SourceForge. It's very basic because, well, I run FEWM, so I'm a very simple person. Um, but you know, it's all there. There's a subversion repository that I put up there. Um, Jack is also required to use this software. I'm not intending to change that at the moment because it basically works as it is. And there are aspects of Jack that we really need for this type of thing, especially with that multi-channel stuff. It's just easier to do. Um, and yeah, I just I welcome anyone to contact me on that email address um, if they've got questions or suggestions or um, any other thing that they think or any feedback to provide for it. So that in a nutshell is TT Trigger. <laughs>